Welcome back to another episode of Lunch and Learn, which is this week's daily prayer series um, brought to you by Second Presbyterian Church. My name is Allison Bauer. I'm the pastor here, and we have been creating daily prayer series um, since we started worshiping separately during this coronavirus crisis um, as a way of staying connected with each other, even if we can't be with each other, we can still be reading the same scripture passages and saying, um, praying about the same kinds of things. So this week's series, is, we are circling back to a daily devotional I wrote um, at the beginning of this crisis and distributed to folks in the church. Um, and so now we're turning those into this video series of daily prayer services. Um, so this is episode four of seven. And if you haven't already downloaded the uh, daily devotional guide, you can do that. There's a link in the description here of the video. Um, so we are on day four. Um, and so the format that we've been following is a brief prayer for illumination before we re read scripture. Then I will read the scripture that is listed uh, in the guide. And then there's a little reflection and then some questions. So we will work our way through those and then pray together at the end. So let us begin with a word of prayer. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. So looking at day four in our Philippians daily devotional, the reading today is Philippians 2, 12 through 18, which I will read from the New Revised Standard Version. And it says this, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world." It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you also must be glad and rejoice with me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this daily devotional, uh, it says Paul's presence makes a difference in the life of the church, no doubt. Um, you know, students behave better when the teacher's in the room. Children generally behave better when the parent is in the room. And presumably, church members behave better when the pastor is in the room. So Paul's presence makes a difference in the life of the church, and his absence does too. Um, in yesterday's episode, we read about the implied discord that was happening in the church at that time, presumably because Paul wasn't there to referee arguments as they were happening. So I guess this is one of those, when the cat's away, the mice will squabble kind of situations. Um, but Paul doesn't want the Philippians' conduct to be tied to his presence, because that would really make it a cult, not a church. You know, he really wants their behavior to be the works of their faith. He wants it to be good fruit that is being produced in their lives. So he sees the writing on the wall and knows that he will not always be around to correct their behavior. You know, he's sitting in a jail cell right now writing this letter to him, so he's absent from them. 
but they're still able to exchange letters back and forth, and he can long-distance referee disagreements as they come up. But he knows he's not going to live forever, and he knows the more and more hostility he faces as he continues to proclaim faith in Jesus Christ, despite what the leaders and the powers that be, how they feel about that. He sees the writing on the wall and knows that he, he's just not always going to be there to correct their behavior. So rather than asking them to be obedient because of their love for him, he asks them to be obedient as Christ was obedient. So I once read that Picasso, Pablo Picasso, the famous and amazing artist, is credited with, whether he said it or not, we can't be sure, but he's credited with saying, good artists borrow, great artists steal. And if that's the case, then Paul is a great artist because he actually steals the words of Moses from his own farewell speech in Deuteronomy 31 and 32 without adopting the negativity that Moses ends up with toward the end of his journey. You know, the Israelites were a grumbling people, to be sure. We've heard that story again and again. But Paul's echo of Moses' words for the Philippians are, are intended as a caution and a warning not to give in or to assimilate with the crooked and perverse generation around them, but instead to shine like stars. So it's an encouragement to monitor their behavior, kind of this process of sanctification, this idea of shining like the stars instead of being like everybody else. So he takes those words of Moses and uses them as a caution and a warning and an encouragement. So question one there says the word work is used three times in verses 12 and 13 here in Philippians. And, you know, anytime you see the word work that often, that really starts to sound like works righteousness. But we know from all that Paul has written that he's all about faith through grace alone. So why do you think he includes so much emphasis on this word work? What does how we live or work have to do with understanding the mind of Christ? So that's the first question for you to ponder. And then question number two says, Paul tells the Philippians to work, there's that work word again, work out their salvation with fear and trembling. So what is, what is that all about? Does that mean we're supposed to be afraid of God and do good things to appease God so he's not angry with us? And if that's not the case, then why are good works or why is working out our salvation a good thing that we should do? So I encourage you now as you take some time to think and reflect over those questions, certainly revisit the passage read it, you know, another time or two through. Um, and then you can hit pause on this video while you think through your answers. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the answers. This is a, everybody gets to play along. Um, so if you are listening to this with someone, I encourage you to talk together about what those answers are. We have, um, it's possible you have read through this devotional before, so it's interesting if you can remember kind of what your answers were a month and a half or two months ago, and if your answers today are any different from that. Um, if you're listening to this by yourself, um, I do encourage you to take a few moments of silence or close to silence, quiet time, um, and to think through these answers and what they really mean for you and for your life. Um, I sometimes get distracted when I'm just thinking by itself, so I encourage you to maybe jot some things down if you have a similar problem and write out your answers to that. Um, so hit pause, think, reflect, write, do whatever it is you need to do. And then um, if you want to create your own prayer using the words of Philippians 2, certainly I invite you to do that. 
And if you'd just like to pray along with the prayer that I included in the devotional, you're welcome to do that too. So I'll give you a few seconds to make up your mind what you're going to do, and then we will pray. Let us pray. Holy God, in this time away from the routine of worship and confession, our obedience may be starting to slip. We may start drifting away from you without the accountability and the routine of meeting with other believers. Hold on to us, Lord. Help us to set our minds and our eyes and our hearts on you. In these days of extra time and unwanted Sabbath, help us to work out our own salvation, knowing that it is you at work in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, that's it for another episode of Lunch and Listen. We have day five, day six, and day seven. Oh, and there's day eight. So we have four more episodes to go. And the next one will be posted on Tuesday around noon. And so I hope that you have a delicious lunch and an edifying um, time studying God's word and listening for God's voice. So be well, my friends, and God be with you till we meet again.